Hegel identifies a metaphysical reality. The world, he said, is the product of a universal mind or universal spirit, and his word for this is the Geist. I have it right here, G-E-I-S-T. So Hegel says, a rational process is at work in the world. Change in our world is not random. Things evolve into higher forms. And Hegel had very significant for this. He takes this idea of things evolving into higher forms, and he applies this to human history. He's the first philosopher we've had so far that we've talked about who is concerned with history. We haven't seen this before. He, he says, look at, look at cultures all over the world, and we're going to find purpose and work there. They all move from basic survival to forming communities, eventually to cultures of literacy and rationality. Each stage is higher than the previous one, and the process, and this is a fairly famous word for Hegel, but he says, well, I'll, I'll get to the word in a minute. Human history is a result of the Geist trying to work something out in an evolutionary struggle. And Hegel identifies the process, and he says the process by, the, by which the Geist works is dialectical. And that means a set of conflicts. And I will explain, and this is a famous uh, part of Hegel's philosophy that I'm going to go into. But the process is a dialectical one. This is the way history unfolds. And dialectical means a set of conflicts. So, and these are Hegel's famous terms. He would call one stage of history the thesis. There will be a reaction against this stage and the reaction against this stage he calls the antithesis. And then there will be a synthesis in which a high synthesis of these two, this set of conflicts here, and a higher stage is reached, and he calls this higher stage the synthesis. So this is this is famous part of Hegel's philosophy. Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. And now, the question is, what is the trajectory of all of this? What is the final stage, the final stage of history that the Geist is moving the world toward? Now, Hegel had studied theology. He had gone to seminary. And he says that human history is moving toward fulfillment that there will be the equivalent of, now in Christian theology, there is something called the millennium. This would be the thousand year period when Christ will rule as a type of golden age on earth. Hegel takes that idea, this idea of a millennium, which would be a golden age, a time of perfection, and he applies it to his view of history. And he says that the final stage in human history is being reached during his lifetime. And the final stage of human history, Hegel says, is the emergence of the state. The collective will of individuals are being expressed. We were seeing the emergence of democracies instead of just kings and monarchs. Hegel says individuals will surrender their freedom for the sake of the whole. And Hegel goes so far as to call the state the march of God in the world. And Hegel says that the highest duty of the individual is to obey the commands of the state. 
this is high, this is a higher duty than the individual conscience. So Hegel would not believe in natural law, that we have a conscience, uh, something that tells us the difference between right and wrong. No. Uh, our duty is not to listen to our conscience. Okay. It is to obey the commands of the state. And so the old Anglo-Saxon view of rights as a right to be free from interfer interference, Hegel disputes. And the duty to the state is more important than these rights because the state makes ordered lives possible. And I'm going to digress here for just a minute. Uh, one of the perplexing questions in World War II, if you know something about the history of World War II, was when the, toward the end of the war, when the Russians uh, were beginning to invade Germany, coming from the east, the Allied forces, the United States, Great Britain, France, were coming from the West. The Russians were carrying out a number of atrocities on the German people. The war was over. Germany had no chance to win that war. And the question that perplexed people is, why did they not surrender to us, to the Allies, to, to the United States, Great Britain, France? They would have been treated well. Uh, they would not have been subjected to essentially the Holocaust that way that they were from the Russian army. And the answer is, Germany was in the influence, Germans were the influence of, uh, of Hegel. These German generals did not feel that they had the right to act on their individual conscience and what they believed was right. They felt that what they had to do was to obey the commands of the state. This is straight from Hegel. That's an aggression. I'm going to come back uh, 